we are going to do a special um, lecture on the 70 years captivity, Babylonian captivity. Let us pray. Father, as we continue your word, Father, and to understand what has happened during the time of the Babylonian captivity, we need your Holy Spirit to guide us once again. We thank you for that promise in Jesus' name. Amen. I do the 70 years captivity or share with you 70 years of captivity because there are some questions that came in my study with other denominations and so forth. So I want to share it with you in case some of these questions may come up with you. The 70 years captivity is called 70 years. So you don't use the day year principle. Are you with me? When God tells you it's 70 years, why do you want to use the day year principle? So it's literal 70 years. 70 years captivity. So the question is, where are these 70 years of Babylonian captivity? So we're going to look into that and then put it on timeline that you can see it. There's a few texts in the Bible that mention the 70 years captivity, which we find in the book of Chronicles, we find it in the book of Daniel. We find it in the book of Jeremiah. Um, and the book of Zechariah, I think. So there's a few of them. We'll, we'll read some of them. You have to put these texts all together so that you can get a bigger picture. So I'm going to read some of them. And then we'll go on to, to the explanations. Jeremiah 25 verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Joachim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. There's a lot of information in this one verse. So, Jeremiah chapter 25 is where you first want to go. Now, if you read Isaiah 25... And you read verse, I think it's verse 9 and 10. We like to quote those verses. What is the verse saying? I know the thoughts that I think about you to give you an expected end. Are you with me? Many of us use that verse as a promise. But many times we use it out of context. Because that text is for the Jews that are in captivity. Okay. Or that's going into captivity. So we see then that Jeremiah is speaking about, of he's receiving a vision specifically in the first year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign. Verse 25, uh, chapter 25, verse 11. And this whole land shall be desolation and astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king 70 years. So we see then, this is the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, and God is saying to Jeremiah, tell these people and the nations around, it can be a message for the nations around, but you're going to serve Nebuchadnezzar for 70 years. You're going to serve him for 70 years. Verse 12, and it shall come to pass, when 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon, and that nation, says the Lord, for their iniquity, and the land of the Galdeans, and will make it uh, perpetual desolations. So, um, when the 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon. Okay, so we'll move on as we go through the, the specific um, verses. Jeremiah 29 verse 10, For this says the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work, work toward you, in causing you to return to this place. So now it's connected to when the 70 years are finished, I will cause you to go back to Jerusalem. I'll cause you to go back to Jerusalem. So Jeremiah is saying, if you don't listen, Nebuchadnezzar is going to come. You're going to serve Nebuchadnezzar for 70 years. This text is saying, after the 70 years, I'll cause you to go back to rebuild Jerusalem. Second uh, Chronicles, and them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign 
of kingdom of Persia to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths for as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. Three score and ten years is seventy years. So why did God uh, allow them to go into captivity? They just carried on. They, they didn't keep God's word in his sanctuary and the Jewish economy. God says, I'm shutting you down. You're going into captivity and the land is going to rest for 70 years. So that's the reason. That's the reason. Now look at Daniel. We come to the book of Daniel. He's praying in chapter 9. In chapter 9 is found the, the starting point for the 490 year prophecy. All right? The beginning of the 2300 day prophecy. Look at the similarities that are happening in this chapter. There's a parallel in this chapter. Daniel, in the first year of Darius, now who's this Darius? This is Darius the Mede. Babylon has just been conquered okay, by Cyrus and Darius. And Darius was made the king over Babylon. Okay, over Babylon. The son of Asherus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Galdeans, or Babylon. So what happens to Daniel? So in this first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So here is Daniel. He realizes that the 70 years is almost finished. That is why he goes into prayer. Because he's asking God, God, you promised. He's reading the prophecy. He says, Lord, we are almost there. Please. And he prays for the sins. He intercedes, basically, for his nation. And he prays that prayer where he includes himself. Forgive us our sins. We have sinned against you. Right? And the sanctuary and we defiled the sanctuary and so forth and so forth. We need to go back. Lord, the 70 years are almost finished. And in this whole process, this is studying between two things. The 2300 day prophecy in Daniel chapter 8. And where the angel comes and explains to him the first part of the vision of 2300 days. The 490 years. So he's in between trying to understand this vision that was given in chapter 8. So look at the similarities here. God does not give him the answer of that prayer in the way he wanted it. But God gives the answer in a bigger sense. All right. So Daniel is studying a prophecy and at the end of that prophecy... The sanctuary needs to be restored. Do you see my wording? God promises after this prophecy, after this time period, a time prophecy, they will go back to Jerusalem and restore the temple. Do you see that? Right. Now, after 70 years, they go back, restore the temple. Look at what God gives him. He gives him the bigger picture. God says, after this time period, 2,300 days, will the sanctuary be restored? Can you see the similarities? Right. So, in, in Daniel's mind, he's studying the 70 years prophecy, but God gives him the bigger prophecy of the heavenly sanctuary. He's thinking of the earthly sanctuary, but God gives him the picture of the heavenly sanctuary. He didn't understand that. Because when God gives him the 2,300 day prophecy, uh, Daniel wants to faint. This is too much for him to bear. How long? I thought it's 70 years. 2,300. That's why Daniel prays. And he goes back and he says, Am I understanding it correctly, Lord? God gives him the bigger vision. 
of the 2300 which is parallel earthly sanctuary be restored heavenly sanctuary being restored okay I want you to notice another thing he sees that the 70 years are almost finished and that's where people make the mistake in this 70 year period is that he is in the first year of Darius Babylon was conquered in 539 before Christ that's the date historians all agree on this date so the next year right the first year of Darius's reign is in 538 remember we're counting down 539 it's now in 538 that's the first year of Darius the king now I keep that in mind usually when you conquered in that year the next year is your first year of reign not the same year that you conquered okay very important to understand it in this prophecy so why would Daniel pray for this on this time period 70 years if it's already been fulfilled he is praying because he know the time is almost fulfilled that the the decree must go out right that they can go back to Jerusalem and build the temple so the 70 years are not finished yet okay it's not complete yet it's almost there <clears throat> now I want you to share something in your mind with you when you read the Bible think about what you're reading God wants us to contemplate the word let me give you an example when the Israelites come out of Egypt they find themselves at the Red Sea okay they turn around and they see the Egyptians coming now how far can you see how far if, if, if you go to the free state and it's flat right you can see quite far maybe 10 kilometers maybe you can see 10 kilometers there's the Egyptians coming 10 kilometers from you how long do you think with those those horses they'll reach you 10 kilometers how long maybe they drive 20 kilometers an hour are you with me 30 kilometers an hour I don't know how fast the horses are moving within a half an hour within an hour whatever you want to tell one within an hour those horses are by you how do you think a million Israelites can get through the Red Sea without them catching them come on come on God has to intervene right the Red Sea is not even open yet okay they turn to Moses Moses we're gonna die here Moses don't you worry you just stand still and watch the Red Sea goes open it still takes them to go all those kilometers right through the Red Sea so God intervenes and he brings darkness between the Israelites and the Egyptians till they could get mostly through the Red Sea and then when God takes away the darkness the, the Egyptians rush in all right and they die can you understand what I'm trying to tell you when you read look at the dimensions of what is happening in the text all right so let me give you some of the background here which I believe is the background of this text and chapter number 10 the next chapter listen very carefully Daniel from the beginning was taken by Nebuchadnezzar and raised to a certain position okay Daniel had a high position in the courts of Babylon right through his life except when Belshazzar was reigning Belshazzar did not recognize him even though he knew who Daniel was All right so Daniel always had a high position All right so he was the minister okay so don't you think that any of the Syrian nations Egypt Medo Persia whoever was the the world powers in that time didn't know Daniel who knows who knows Putin who knows who's the guy in America Biden everybody knows them knows their ministers are you with me same in those days 
even though we didn't have TV and things in those days, everybody knew who was Daniel. He sat in the circles. He made decisions with Nebuchadnezzar. Right. He had all these astrologers and wise people and whatever, and Daniel was above all of them. So he reigns with Nebuchadnezzar for 42 years, 43 years. All right? Nebuchadnezzar reigned for 43 years. Okay. Now, for a while, there were some other people that reigned, you know, with, after, after Nebuchadnezzar was, was another ruler. Then came his uh, son-in-law. All right? Because it seems in the Bible that Nebuchadnezzar did not have a son. We don't read it there. But we know he had a daughter. Why? Because when Belshazzar, the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, was having the feast with the handwriting on the wall, who came in to help him? The queen. The queen was the daughter of Nebuchadnezzar. And she had a husband, all right, that was not so interested in ruling. He was supposed to rule. He ruled for a few years, but he was more away from Babylon than anything else. So he made his son, Belshazzar, king in his place while he's out. So Belshazzar reigned for a few years. All right. So they co-reigned, if you want to put it that way, almost. And then, for those years, Daniel was not in those high places. Belshazzar did not recognize Daniel. All right. Now listen to me. Everybody knew Daniel. Around, the nations around, they knew Daniel. They knew the leaders. Okay? So when Belshazzar came, comes, handwriting on the wall, that same night, right, Cyrus came in with his army, dried up the Euphrates River, and so by the way, do you think they can dry up a river in one night? Doesn't matter how big that army is. Did you see how big the, the river is, the Euphrates River? They didn't have back actors, right? To dig trenches. It's all by hand. So how long did, did you think that feast of Belsessa was going on? Months. Months. History tells us that the people inside Babylon stood on the walls, took food, and cast it. To the Medes and the Persians down there. Say, what are you going to do? We have all the food in this, in this city for 20 years. If you break down one of the walls of Babylon, you'll find another one. It was so wide that four chariots can ride on those, on those walls. And even turn. So, of course, Cyrus is not going to take so long. He does, he's not interested, right? And I believe through Revelation... Somehow, through revelation, God gives him the idea, the wisdom, to dig the trenches. Took him months to dig the trenches. And that night, when the handwriting came on the wall, he came underneath the gates of the city, took in the city, and everything was done. What happened to Daniel? Listen very carefully to me. Think about it. Daniel was in a high position. Everybody knew him. The Medes and the Persians knew him. How do you think that in the very first year of Darius' reign, that Darius put him as number one minister without knowing him? You'll be stupid as a leader. He knew Daniel. How do I know he knows, knows him? Another reason why I know he knows him is because Darius, the Bible tells us Darius was 62 years old. When he became the king of Babylon. Cyrus put him there as the king of Babylon. So Darius was 62 years old. Meaning he knew Daniel. Daniel at that stage was already in his 80s. Okay. He was old. You can do the calculation. All the kings that reigned in Babylon was 66 years. From Nebuchadnezzar's first, first year to Belshazzar, the handwriting on the wall. 66 years. Okay, not 70, 66 years. Okay. So you can count. Daniel was about 17 when he came to Babylon as a young man. At 66, how much do you get? 83, somewhere there. My mathematics are correct. 
So Daniel was already 80 something years old. And here's another king which is 62. And I believe the way Daniel conducted himself in the years that he reigned in Babylon with the leaders, Darius knew about it. And when Babylon fell, I believe in my heart that Darius and Cyrus gave instruction to sort Daniel. Find that man. You don't kill him, you bring him here. And Darius loved uh, 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 Daniel. We see that in when Daniel was put in the lion's den. He could not sleep. Now can you imagine? A king that would not know Daniel at all would be without sleep for a friend? Come on, guys. Darius knew Daniel long before Babylon fell. And when Babylon fell, I believe Darius sought for Daniel. And Daniel was made the high of 100 and above 120 people. He was loved by Darius. Now, I want to ask you the question. Now, Daniel is praying, chapter 9. Chapter 10, we find a very interesting picture. It tells us something happening behind the scenes. That there are demons assigned to every single leader. Read it. Read it in Daniel chapter 10. They are called the prince of Persia. The prince of Grisha. That's a demon. Demon assigned to every single leader. And of course God is working with his angels on leaders as well. Try to convince them. Try to guide, guide leaders of this world. God is in control. Don't you think for one moment, when Daniel was now praying, fasting in chapter 10, he was praying in chapter 9, he was fasting in chapter 10, don't you think for one moment that he didn't speak to Cyrus? He is then put in charge by Darius, the king of Babylon that works with Cyrus, that conquered Babylon. Don't you think that Daniel did not speak to Cyrus? Of course he did. They're now in the same cabinet. They're ministers together. These are the two kings and Daniel is the minister. They're making the plans together. Don't you think for one moment, Daniel said to Cyrus, Cyrus, let me tell you something. Come sit here. And he takes the scrolls and he reads the book of Isaiah. I want to show you something, Cyrus. Did you know that your name is in our scrolls? 150 years before you were born. Your name is even mentioned in Isaiah. I believe with all of my heart, God has put Daniel there as the first step to make the decree by Cyrus for the Jews to go back to Jerusalem. He was the influence. He showed Cyrus what happened in the scrolls. And Cyrus was impressed. But of course, the demon, the prince of Persia, the prince of Cyrus, was trying not to make the decree. Because that's the great controversy. Satan does not want the Jewish nation to go back to Jerusalem. But then Michael comes to help. Help Gabriel. And Cyrus made a decision. He made a decree. So the Jews can go back to Jerusalem. I just wanted to give you that background. You must read the Bible and think of what you're reading. Right. There are things that are happening. Let your mind go. Alan White says in the book of Desire of Ages. We need to let our mind go every day to the last scenes of Jesus' life. You need to think what happened there. Think of... Look where they are punishing Jesus, where they are persecuting Jesus. The nails in his hands, the blood that was flowing, the words that Jesus spoke, the circumstances around the life of Jesus. So it is with all the texts that we read. There's a context. There's a storyline. There are, there are characters. There are human beings just like us. And you'll find deeper meaning in the word of God. So here's De Daniel studying this prophecy. He's between these two things. He's thinking of the earthly sanctuary. And he is the influence that Cyrus makes the decree. But when Daniel is now praying, the first year of 
of Darius, only 66 years expired. Because what did Jeremiah say? They're going to serve the king, of Nebuch the king Nebuchadnezzar, all these nations. It's going to be desolate, all right? The sanctuary is going to be made desolate. Um, Jerusalem is going to be made desolate from the first year of Cyrus. Right, in Babylonian captivity, only 66 years of all the kings that reigned in Babylon. That's historical. That's history. You can check it up. There's about four kings that reigned. All right, and giving you the dates the Nebuchadnezzar reigned for 43 of the 66 years. And the last one was Belshazzar. His father also died um, because he still lived um, during the time that, that uh, Cyrus came into Babylon. Now, if 60 years expired by the time Daniel's praying, how many years are left for the 70 years captivity? Four years. Four years. Okay. So in other denominations, they're saying, wait a second. Um, when Cyrus' first year of reign must be the year when he gave the decree. Now, according to the book of Ezra, the book of Ezra, the first few verses of Ezra, tells you the first year of the reign of Cyrus, a decree went out. So very clear. In the first year of Cyrus, he made the decree for the Jews to go back to Jerusalem. Now, logically, Nebuchadnezzar started reigning 66 years, and we find Daniel praying. Because the prophecy is almost finished. So other denominations are saying, well, the first year of Cyrus is just after the conquering of Babylon. Right? When was Babylon conquered? In 539. So looking at 538, towards 537 is when Cyrus made the decree. But that's not 70 years. Are you with me? That is two years short of 70 years. Okay. And that's where they make the mistake. They don't keep this two texts into consideration. Because in the first year of Cyrus, um, Daniel prayed. That means the 70 years were not done yet. And they take, don't take into consideration the life of Cyrus, uh, the life of, of Darius. So here's the, here's the problem. Darius, uh, Cyrus, was married to Darius' daughter. When kings in those times made allegiance, they made agreements. They usually did it in marrying. Okay? Give my daughter to this guy and this guy. Whatever. Let's make an agreement. Okay? So Cyrus made an agreement with the, with the Medes. He's the Persian Empire. So Darius, which is 62 years old, gave his daughter to Cyrus, which were young. Right? So he marries um, Darius' daughter. So Darius becomes his father-in-law. So when they conquered Babylon, he takes his father-in-law, he says, I want you to be king over Babylon. I'll be king over all, all right, to everything. Put you as king, and the, the, the Bible tells us he was made king over the realm of the Galdeans. That is by Cyrus. He says to his father-in-law, you take Babylon, you're the king of Babylon. But within two years, Darius died. Within those two years, Daniel was put in the lion's den. Okay, that's the time period he was put in the lion's den. But Darius died within about two years. So now, Babylon was conquered in 539. The first year of Darius is 538. He lived for two years, more or less two years. Okay? So you subtract that, 538 to 537. Are you with me? So the first year of Cyrus is in 538. Ah, 536, sorry, we're going down. 536. That is the correct date when Cyrus made the decree for the Jews to go back to Jerusalem. Now you count back from 536 back to when Nebuchadnezzar reigned the first time. Right. Started reigning. He conquered Jerusalem in 606. Right, 606. But his first year was 605. So now you count 70 years, and that's where you're getting to Cyrus' uh, decree of 536, 535.
after Christ. Now, before Christ. Before Christ. Now, what is the problem? You say, well, okay, what is the problem here? It's because in the calculation of the 70 years, this date is not, oh, Darius is not taken in consideration. So, they're taking the date of 538, 537, and they're working backwards and say 70 years, and they come to the date 607 before Christ. And they say, this is where Nebuchadnezzar started reigning. And they build a whole, the Jehovah Witnesses build a whole um, um, prophetic picture from that starting date until 1914. The 2,520 years prophecy of the Jehovah Witnesses. So they're working backwards, not taking Darius' two years into consideration. So they are two years out in the 70 years prophecy. So they're taking the 70 year prophecy. They look at the destruction of Babylon 539. They're saying, okay, the first year of Cyrus is 538. So somewhere towards the end of 538, he made a decree. So it already falls in the civil year of the Jewish calendar. So that's 537. So 537, 70 years back, we're coming to the date 607. That's our starting date for our time prophecy that ends in 1914. But they don't use Darius. It's two years of rain. So they are two years out of their own prophecy. So they cannot exist. What do the Jehovah Witnesses say about 1914? Jesus is taking his kingdom and he's going to reign. All right, that's what they're saying. But nothing happened in 1914. <laughs> All right. Now they come and say, no, it was the first world war. That was the thing. But there was a second world war. And then they start setting dates. You cannot believe how many dates the Jehovah Witnesses were setting in their publications. And not one of them came through. So at some point in time you need to realize something's wrong here. How can you set dates? And that is why I'm emphasizing it to you today. Do not set dates. Then otherwise you fall in the same category as the Jehovah Witnesses. And if it doesn't come true, People are not going to believe our message. They're not going to believe our message. Ezra. Chapter 4. That's the decree made, right, for the Jews to go back to Jerusalem. Okay? And then the last decree, the third decree by Artaxerxes, right, is in here. Um, Haggai, the prophet, also spoke about it. Zechariah the, Zachari the prophet also spoke about it because they were builders. Also in helping the builders finishing the work um, at the temple and in Jerusalem eventually. Right, and Zechariah also speaks about the 70 years of captivity. So there's all the, the text that you can read on the 70 years of desolation on Jerusalem. And I just wanted to show you the, the timeline here. So eventually, to, to speak to our friends, the Jehovah Witnesses, I came up with this chart to show them that they are 20 years out in their whole calculation. I started off with what we know. There is something missing, the 612, right? The fall of Nineveh. Okay, fall of Nineveh happened in 612 before Christ. Then I went through all the kings mentioned. In, I went in the Bible, went from kings and chronicles, looked at all the kings that reigned and how many years they reigned. Okay? And we find that Nebuchadnezzar, his first year of reign, he besieged Jerusalem in 606, but his first year is 605. And that is confirmed by history. It's confirmed by history. Right? And there were four sieges in Jerusalem. Right? The third one was a complete desolation. The temple and Jerusalem was destroyed. And that happened with Zechariah. Right? Zechariah, the last king that sat on the throne in 587, 586 before Christ. Okay. 
That was in the 19th year. Right, that was the third siege on Jerusalem. 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign. Right, you cannot make a mistake on that one. But anyway, so 19th year of reign, Nebuchadnezzar's reign stopped, right, after 43 years. There was uh, Emil Marduk, or evil Marduk, that reigned for a short period of time. Then, um, Nereglisa, that reigned for a period of time. And then came the, the, um, the, the son-in-law of Nebuchadnezzar, um, Nebuchadnezzar, and he reigned, but he was not interested in the reign. And somewhere in his reign, he made his son, Belshazzar, the king. And that's the Belshazzar we find in the prophecy. Now, if you move from 605, and you add up all the dates of the kings that reigned until Babylon fell by the Medes and the Persians is 66 years. Right. So you have to add Darius that reigned two years before the first year of Cyrus and then the decree was made in 536 and there's your 70 years of Babylonian captivity. That's so simple. It's so simple. Um, this is not what I, this is all I wanted to show you on the 70 year period. Okay, we're not going to answer questions right now, but the reason why I show you this is that you understand the 70 years, right? You know where it begins and where it ends. So if you ever come in contact with people on the 70 years, at least you have a foundation of what we believe as Seventh-day Adventists and what the 70 years is all about, where it starts, where it ends. Because there is a lot of deceptions out there. People believe different things about it. All right. So that you have it. And it's in the notes. It will be part of the notes as well. Okay. And the reasons for that 70 years of desolations. And it connects to the heavenly sanctuary. There is a connection. Even though it's an earthly sanctuary. To go and restore the earthly sanctuary. Right. Daniel was shown the heavenly sanctuary. The restoration of the heavenly sanctuary. Right. So may God bless you as you study these things further. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Guide and lead us in all truth, Father. There are so many deceptions. And all that we have is your word. Help us to apply it to your own lives. May it transform our own lives. Through the work of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.